sector, the community support volunteers. So this is individuals who have really helped during the, um, uh, as a community uh, support volunteer in the uh, recent uh, COVID-19 crisis. Um, so let's just meet the finalists. We have three, I think, to meet. So we have Alec Cormack, Dean Driscoll, and Layla Brace Williams. Um, so um, I'm going to, uh, we'll, we'll now hear from the nominators. I've nominated Alec Cormack for this award for all the work that he's done for us in the Amroth area and made sure that uh, a notice was put through every door, which not only gave them the link to the Amroth Good Neighbours website, but also gave them a dedicated telephone line. So if they weren't IT um, uh, friendly, then they could also phone for help. Um, so he then set up ID badges and set about um, uh, asking volunteers to, to volunteer. Um, we had lots of volunteers and um, Alec um, made sure that they were fully informed as well on to what they were expected to do and safe uh, working and everybody was uh, made and given a, a, an ID badge which they were able to take out with them when, when they were doing their, their volunteering. He manned the line, he manned the uh, website, so anybody that called in, he then um, arranged for a volunteer to respond. He also visited local shops uh, to explain the scheme and got agreement from them that, that volunteers were able to go and purchase multiple items because they were uh, shopping on behalf of other people in the community. Um, he provided information via the website, as I said, on, uh, on safe working practices, both, both to keep the volunteers safe and the people that they were um, serving. Alec went through the DBS registration so that um, we were, he was able then to verify everybody who volunteered as a bona fide resident of the area um, and to ensure that they were known to the team. And if anybody wasn't known to the team, they provided references which were followed up. He has gone on to attend Zoom meetings, both with PABS, Pembroke County Council. He's brought in experts to speak, including medical doctors and a microbiologist who've been able to answer questions about the virus, about safe working practices, about the current situation that, that, that's been going on in Pembrokeshire. And as well as doing all that, he's actually helped other groups around the county with their IT to be able to set up schemes set very similar to Amroth Good Neighbours. Alec achieved a massive amount in a, a really short period of time and he, he basically brought the scheme together, made it what it was, um, kept us up to date, helped volunteers and spent many hours every day making sure that the scheme worked and, and did what it was designed to do, which was, was help the residents of the Amroth area. Um, and Alec, we have been so grateful to you. Um, not only you know, have you been able to use your skills, but you use them willingly and um, for many hours. And um, you basically provided an amazing service to the residents of our local area. Thank you. Uh, Winstone and I've been children since the beginning of the match because I unfortunately fell ill and for Dean. I wouldn't have been able to do anything, I wouldn't have been able to get in shopping. There's only been a certain, you know, a handful of people that have been willing to help and Dean's been great. He still, he messages me every twice a week to make sure we don't need anything. He's really good. Uh, I met Layla probably we still got chatting on Facebook probably about a year ago because she was very passionate about the community and she, she set up this phenomenal group to help people in the community that have some challenging mental health issues or just feeling down or just really just to get people together. Not long after, um, obviously, coronavirus happened and, and Layla just sprang into life. She... Um, created like little keep fit activities on the pavements at the golf course she did an easter egg trail she did all these wonderful things to keep people socially distanced but to still keep the kids engaged and and you know so that they weren't forgotten about um she also threw herself into doing other activities around Pembroke Dock so she helped make benches she did a Halloween trail um, and you name it, Layla has been there. She's been doing raffles, raising money, 
absolutely everything to support the community and donate to needy causes. And she's like a force of nature. She has been phenomenal. Um, she has been an incredibly valuable member of the community, particularly directly in Penna, but also to the outlying areas. You know, her love spreads out as far as Nayland and Pembroke and Moncton. So although I think it was originally targeted at Penna, it's, it has, her passion has spread out really, and she's doing wonderful things. I don't think she thinks she does, but she does definitely, without a doubt. All right, Layla, thank you so much. Keep it up. You're brilliant. Uh, you motivate all of us to do whatever it is that we all do. Your fun and your energy and your drive is phenomenal. Just keep it going. But remember, stay healthy and look after yourself too. Take care. So, um, three, as with all of our finalists, three really worthy finalists. And... Uh, but we've, um, the panel has uh, selected a winner uh, for this category. So I'm pleased to announce that the winner of the Community Support Volunteer for 2020 is Layla Brace. So well done, Layla. Um, and I don't know if Layla is on the line. Um, and if you are, and you would like to say a few words, then now's your opportunity. Uh, um, I I live only 50 yards from Layla, and just for, for what uh, she's done for Penna, I couldn't uh, think of anyone better to win it. Really good. Dean, thank you. That's very generous. And you are a very worthy, highly commended runner-up, and thank you for everything that you have done. And also, um, Alec, um, a really worthy, highly commended. And I will just say that in the early days, when we started working with the Pembrokeshire Community Support Network, Alec came up with a solution to volunteer ID badges within, I don't know, 24, 48 hours of the problem being highlighted. I think it took Welsh Government a further six weeks to come up with the national scheme. So um, you did extremely well at a local level and your problem solving ability is second to none. So uh, well done and thank you for all that you're doing and continue to do. Uh, it's been really good working with you and with you, Dean. Um, thank you very much indeed for what you've done as well. And that's the uh, community support group. So um, we've got four finalists in this category. So we'll, um, uh, if we can meet them now. Okay, so we have um, Freshwater East group, Kevnogi Kilgarran. Saundersfoot Connect and Tin Man Tuesday. And we're now going to hear from the nominators of each of the four finalists. Well, I've nominated the uh, Freshwater East volunteer group. And it's a group of uh, individuals in Freshwater who've uh, started a local newsletter. And uh, it reaches over 200 people now in the village and as far as Pembroke and Tenby. Really keeps people in touch with each other now that people are feeling a bit isolated and worried and anxious. And it's got a really lovely sort of upbeat nature about it. It uh, tells people what's going on, what the events are locally, where they can go for volunteer help and who can deliver things. And really, uh, I think just keeps, it's really brought people together with a really lively village sort of style. And I enjoy reading it in Tenby, knowing what's going on. I have friends and family in Freshwater, so I, I keep in touch with them through that too. It, it sort of starts off always with some lovely photographs. Um, then there's always a coronavirus sort of update what's going on from Welsh Government and so on and what people can expect and just to remind them of what's what's what. And um, then lots of local news. Um, who's got a surfeit of apples? Who's doing egg deliveries? If the local pub is providing meals, all those kind of local tidbits. Little technical details as well for lots of people who are isolated and maybe not quite so good with Zoom and with um, technical things or how they can get online and access things because I think they have a, an older community there that appreciates that kind of um, help. Um, bits of news about the church when it's open and so on, other activities like that. And then a, a big part of it is Vicky Tomlinson's Nature Notes. 
different books and in poems they've written about lockdown or how they're feeling, um, bits of travel news and some little jokes and funny stories at the end. And so really it's just upbeat and funny and um, I know lots of us look forward to getting it every Monday, Tuesday. And it's been coming out every Monday or Tuesday since. So a weekly, weekly thing. It's about eight or nine pages long. There's lots to read. And um, so it's, I think, quite an effort, you know, putting it together on a weekly basis. But I think it's been a real lifeline for quite a lot of people in the village and in the area. And I think about 200 people get it online. And um, they were telling me they, they hand deliver about 40 copies to people who and maybe not not online as well. I would say three big cheers. <laughs> I think for cheering up our inboxes on a Monday and a Tuesday, um, making us go out and about and walk and find those berries and flowers, giving us a smile about what's going on, funny stories and so on. And generally just that feeling of community. So I think a big thank you. And a really good example, I think, to those of us who don't live in Freshwater East, what we can do in our communities to, to, to help others as well. So I think they've gone out of their way to be part of their community and, and help people. I refer to them as the Kilgarran volunteers. Um, well, it must have been in March this year because, um, yes, that's when I was at my lowest point. My doctor said, go home, stay home, don't see anybody. Um, the coronavirus is on its way. And so I came home and I live on my own. I don't have a car. And I just thought, well, what am I going to do? You know, how am I going to manage? And then the next day, somebody turned up and she said, well, there is a group that can help you. And that's when I got introduced to the um, volunteer group in Kilgarran. But the person who really um, needs to take credit for it all is Councillor John Combetus Davis, because he'd realised that there were a lot of people who, well, who would be at a loss to, to do things, you know, to get shopping. And, um, but I think most of all, it was the fact that I knew that somebody was going to visit every day and it's terribly important when you're on your own to have someone to speak to. And, um, well, I now get up a lot earlier than I used to, just simply that I can be there and open the door and have a chat with somebody. I mean... And the most important thing to me in my day is to have my newspaper, because without the newspaper, I just can't get started. And every single one of the Kilgarran volunteers, they have been so nice, so kind, and they've always spared the time just to have a chat with me, which I really appreciate. Well, I think turning me from somebody who was extremely depressed, and that's not normally my way of things, to somebody who is now very happy and certainly not worried anymore. Um, they've just, well, they have. The, they've just made me feel safe and, and happy. Good evening, my name's Phil Baker and I'm the County Councillor representing Saundersfoot at Pembrokeshire County Council. Um, I wanted to have a chat this evening in regard to my nomination of the Saundersfoot Connect Facebook page and the admin ladies that actually um, run and maintain that site. It started off as four ladies, it's now several people are involved in the day-to-day -day running of the site. Um, the way that the, uh, the group was formed was back in March, middle of March, we could see what was coming towards us in regard to COVID-19. Um, there was no cavalry going to be coming over the hill that we would have to be uh, our own um, manufacturers of how we actually work together as a, as a community and as a village. The two Sarahs uh, that are part of the nomination, 
uh, joined together with two other friends, becoming the four, the, the awesome foursome. The girls started the Facebook page, and it was a real strong synergy that the Facebook page was created to direct people that were in need, were self-isolating, were sheltering, that actually needed some help in the village, no matter what it might be, would actually be uh, posted from the, uh, the Facebook page to the, the volunteer group. And the ethos of the group is, uh, is it true, is it kind, and is it useful? So all the posts that are actually appearing on Saundersfoot Connect um, use that as their mantra. It soon became apparent that th this was a very, very powerful tool. Uh, it was wide ranging. Uh, there were calls from Vietnam, all over the UK, uh, and from Europe in regard to people who had elderly relatives and friends in the village that needed help. It's now up to when I made the, the, the nomination, it started at three, it was at 3,600 members. Um, and in week one of lockdown, we actually delivered between us 3,000 connector cards, which then became 80 volunteers. So we started very, very strongly. We, there, there were over 500 calls directed from the, the Facebook page um, in regard to shopping prescriptions and even dog walking, watering plants through the very hot, dry summer that we had. The group has now become an entity in its own right. Um, it is self-perpetuating. And what we find is now that um, the, the, the admin team have been incredibly successful. And then the uh, Facebook page grew into all... It actually became a people's friend, a virtual friend. But now it's a mechanism for people to link together, share ideas, share interests, share hobbies. There have been uh, live music nights. There have been art competitions, photographic competitions. And ending up fairly recently in the Painting the Village Blue um, volunteer group. I've seen stories and posts where people have actually gotten together that have actually met on Facebook page, on, on the Connect page. And they'll bump at each other in the village, recognize each other from their photographs, and end up having a coffee when we were allowed to. So it's actually gone from strength to strength. They work from silly o'clock in the morning to silly o'clock at night, actually monitoring every post, commenting on every post, coming up with great ideas uh, for people to, to comment on, to join in with conversations. And I'm sure as we go forward, there will be a huge call for this. I, I don't think it's going to come to an end. As you can say, I'm uh, absolutely passionate about what the four ladies have, have done. It's extended into a huge group now, and um, you know the village would be all the poorer for it. As the county councillor for Saundersfoot, I would like I would take this opportunity to thank the four ladies from the admin team for the hard work they put into making our response in the village to COVID such a success. It was the the, the Facebook page that brought everybody together and enabled us to actually link with each other. Hi, my name's uh, Wendy Williams, and I have nominated the Tin Man Tuesday uh, volunteers during lockdown. Tin Man Tuesday was a community food project uh, uh, that came to life, really, from a, uh, one of my memories when I was young uh, with my nan, where I used to go around uh, um, town uh, knocking people's doors for uh, food donations for the British Legion raffle. And um, I had a conversation with my uh, two neighbours over a social distance uh, conversation back then. It was two weeks into lockdown on how we could help food banks and how, how we could help our community in, this, in these tough times. And um, uh, I mentioned about, uh, you know, go around collecting tins and um, wanted to have a bit of fun with it. We came up with the concept of a tin man off the Wizard of Oz. My next neighbour was a tattoo artist, so he designed the, the graphics and images. And the other next neighbour was uh, Ian Gravel from Gravel's Garages and um, he turned his garage into a food hub and we used the vehicles to go around our town um, collecting tins and this just took off um, after, after the first week basically on social media uh, and other towns got involved and we supported them then and setting up their own Tin Man Tuesday projects supporting um, the Perisher Food Bank and Patch and any other food uh, banks uh, they wanted to support and you know, um, over this period of time, there's been over 18,000 tins collected. It's been amazing. And uh, uh, at the peak, there was about 80 volunteers that uh, were collecting tins. And it was a project for all. Um, uh, I really wanted to get families involved and children involved because it was a tough time for them. And um, it was to get uh, a bit of fun and lift the spirits and get the well-being going, uh, basically. And it all started with one tin. And we had children running out, giving us bags of food and tins and wanted to see the Tin Man. So, you know, it just evolved, you know, Tin Man costume and things like this. It was amazing. Um, but uh, 
the people that come out of the woodwork really for me was uh, impressive because um, we had people uh, that set their tin man projects and then businesses helping, for example, one business here in Narbeth did all the uh, graphic designs uh, and printed them up on leaflets, did a leaflet drop around town. Uh, another project, um, uh, we had a uh, boxing club in Premier Dock that took on the concept um, and delivered. We had um, a caravan park in Stepperside, so they uh, were engaging the tourists in, in the summer, doing Tim on Tuesday. Um, took took time, another food uh, service um, in Kilgetty. You know, the list is endless, really. A developer developed a uh, Tin Man map. So, um, regard, rather than us just driving around with, a, <clears throat> with our tins right on the back of our, our van, um, people would uh, input their details on a map. So, we would go around and pick up these certain locations and develop that. Um, it, it, was, it was amazing how many volunteers just got involved and, and added to it. And for me, it was a chance for people to connect, um, see people, get involved. We had people who were isolated but could be involved by just giving a tin. And that was massive for me as well. People were, were frightened and isolated, but they wanted to be part of that pro- part, part of that project and uh, uh, food bank um, support and um, they got involved as well. So it, it was just a massive inclusive project to get people um connected and helping each other basically uh, and, and supporting the food bank and the, the the last thing for me really is the awareness of food banks and how important they are um my own food bank here in narbeth drove past it many years didn't really know much about it but i could tell you every person that works in there now and and see the amazing work they did well before covid uh, and what they're doing now is is uh, is phenomenal and and, and needed and uh, in the lockdown, we were seeing, you know, lots of people using those food banks who never thought they'd use. Um, and some amazing stories coming back as well from uh, the volunteers, but, you know, just by dropping tins off, you know, and uh, that's continued. Um, it has uh, evolved now uh, in, a, in a different way as well, where nights have drawn in now, it's darker, so we've got tin man bins uh, in shops in Narbeth and, and so forth. And, and the other projects now um, uh, have alter their ways as well but uh, the concepts are there giving and connecting and supporting the food bank you know i've just been very grateful for everyone that's took on the concept and for me you've just shown your true colors in a time of crisis uh, you've stepped up to the challenge and, and you've you've supported your community uh, by you know it's a simple tin but you know it goes a massive massive way and uh, you know, our, our food banks now are restocked and, and ready to support people who are vulnerable and uh, isolated um, in the in the current lockdown. And who knows where we're going to be in Christmas? But for me, um, you showed your kindness. You know, you connected to kindness and you supported the community. So uh, thank you. Well, fantastic! Four really excellent uh, finalists there. Um, I'm rather disappointed that Wyndham didn't do his. Um, uh, uh, interview in his Tin Man suit, um, but never mind. Um, so um, I'm delighted to announce the winner of this category, the Community Support Group um, 2020 winner is Saundersfoot Connect Facebook Group. Um, so really well done, um, and uh, but well done to all as well. So I don't know if anybody from the um, uh, Saunders that Connect group would like to say a few words. Yes, hi. I'd like to say a few words on behalf of the uh, admin team. Thank you so much. Woo! <laughs> I just first want to congratulate everybody who's been nominated this evening for every award. It's been absolutely fantastic show of how wonderful everybody's been to step up in this really difficult time and. Um, it's just awesome. I, I've been absolutely blown away by the, the stories that have been um, shared this evening. And uh, congratulations to ev- absolutely everybody who's been nominated, shortlisted and uh, winners. It's been fantastic. And uh, on behalf of the other three girls and myself, we just want to say a massive, massive thank you to everybody. Thank you so much, Phil, for nominating us. We've um, We've loved setting up the group. It's been what what we thought initially was going to be a sort of bit of a a nice group to help people out on Facebook has turned out to be a sort of huge <laughs> huge undertaking. Perhaps you know if we'd have realised how big it was going to be, we might not have started it. But 
We've absolutely loved it. And uh, thank you so much to everybody who's on Saundersfoot Connect because really, you know, we've, we've coordinated something that was already there. We haven't created the community spirit. It was already there. We've just sort of um, created a, a sort of outlet for it to, uh, to be shared with everybody. And uh, it's, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. And so thank you so much, everybody. I, I haven't been um, taking your advice, Sue. I haven't been having cups of tea. I've been having several glasses of wine, so I probably should stop talking now. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Pavs, for so such a brilliant idea to recognise the hard work that's gone in to uh, every every an endeavour that's been going on. And um, obviously, I have to say a special thank you to the twins, Bethany and Sarah and Rose, because I nominated them. And I'm so chuffed to bits that they've they've won so that's a little bit of a plug for the girls but thank you everybody and and thank you so much Pav so cheers cheers <laughs>